138 libras y obviamente en mexicano nunca ha habido ni uno. Talk Nish, Talk Nish, welcome back everybody. Hey man, if you guys did not see Tank Davis push Roly off the stage. <laughs> Yo, man. Yo, Tank, Tank pushed Roly off the stage, man. Tank did a real, he did a real sweet, man. Real subtle, man. You know what I mean? Roly tried to get in front of Tank flexing. Tank was like, Psh. <laughs> <laughs> yo, he, yo, he pushed him dead off the stage, man. <clears throat> yo, man, this fight has been entertaining from start and I hope to finish because one of these guys is going to get finished, man. Either Tank is going to destroy Roly, or Roly is going to do exactly what he said. I don't know if it's going to be the first round, but he's going to pull off the upset and he's going to defeat Gravante Tank Davis. Now, everybody thinks and says Tank is going to come out with the victory. Not only the victory, but Tank is going to come out with either, either a stoppage or a knockout. Now, <clears throat> Coach Calvin said, man, look, for every word that Roley has said, Tank is going to put that in the punch. Roley been talking a lot of shit. So that means that Tank is going to display a superb and devastating onslaught against Roley Romero. I mean, check this out, man. Roley, he does have a puncher's chance. But <clears throat> you heard Tank say it himself, man. He's like the Canelo of the division. Now, Tank is nice, man. You heard countless times, man. You heard Coach Calvin talk about, you know what, man? Like, you guys really even have, and you haven't seen what Tank really can do. Just like they say about Jerron Boutinus, man, because he's too nice, he's too good. And the fact that he gets people up out of there the way that he does, he really doesn't have time to display all the tools that he has in his toolbox. So with that said, coming into this fight, <clears throat> Roley's best rounds, his best chance is going to be in the early rounds because the size that Roley puts on or he put on in this fight, if that becomes a factor, he may start to gas out when he gets to the mid to the mid rounds, especially to the late rounds. Tank is always in pretty decent shape. So if Roley gasses out, especially mid mid fight tank is going to turn up the gas and tank ain't shy about throwing punches and in this fight i know tank is coming into the fight conditioned seasoned and he's ready you know what i'm saying because if he's talking about throwing a punch for all the crap that Roley done been talking about he's going to be throwing a lot of punches per round so naturally he has to be in shape so if Tank is in shape like he should be in shape, Roley is most certainly in trouble. Because if he cannot land that devastating punch and hurt Tank and get Tank up out of there early, Roley don't got a chance, man. <clears throat> because he can't outbox Tank. That ain't happening. The only chance that Roley has is to smother him, overpower him, catch him with a shot, bully him, try to beat him up on the inside, which it's kind of, you know what I mean? I mean, it can kind of go in Tank favor because Tank is smaller. If Tank start, you know what I'm saying? If he start, if he start unloading to the body, throwing that uppercut, set Roly up, and Tank has good movement, you know what I mean? The inside game could, that could be a problem for Roly Romero if he lets Tank get on the inside. And if Roly tries to pressure Tank and really cut off that distance. Like I said, Roly's not a boxer. So in his mind, he's not going to sit back and use his jab and try to create that distance and set up a shot. No, he says that he wants to catch Tank. He wants to make Tank run into something. So that means Tank being the aggressor, Roley is going to try to catch him with something lovely. Now, anything can happen in the sport of boxing. And in this fight, you have two guys coming into the ring with a lot of emotion, especially Roley. Because anybody talking about, I'm talking about, he's telling people they can bet their house on it, that he's going to get take a body in the first round. That means that you're coming into this fight, not just 
with the mission and the purpose to win the fight. But you're trying to win the fight, not only in devastating fashion by a first round knockout, that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. And being as though Roley has maintained that throughout the build up to the fight, he has no choice but to stand on what he says. And even if he does not get Tank up out of there, that's going to make him look bad. And I don't think this fight is going to go the distance. <clears throat> so number one, if Roley can't get Tank up out of there in the first round, that's strike one. If he cannot hurt Tank, that's strike two. If he cannot knock Tank out and he loses the fight, that's strike three. Now, if Tank knocks him out, I definitely believe Tank is going to beat him up, put hands on him, and Tank wins this fight. I told you guys before, it's a, possi it's a strong possibility that Roley might not fight again. If Tank beat the hell out of Roley, I'm talking about crushing. Whoop, I'm talking about whooping. Whoop his ass from bell to bell. And I don't think Tank is going to come out <laughs> guns blazing. I think he's going to leave that to Roley. And just remember what Tia Fimo did um, to Cambosis. Coming out, head full of steam, try to pressure him. Look how that fight turned out. Tia wound up getting upset. And he got dropped. Yes, he did drop Cambosis, but Cambosis got back up and finished the fight strong, and he won the championship rounds. And I don't know if Roley has that same tenacity inside of him. Yes, verbally, as far as speaking, yes, he does talk a good game, but at the same time, Tank, he doesn't do a lot of talking, especially trash talking. Because for real, for real, you got the skills to pay the bills. You ain't got to do a lot of talking. You ain't got to talk a lot of shit, man. That's a weak trait. People who talk a lot, that's a weak trait. You know what I mean? That's something that I was always taught growing up. The loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room. You know what I'm saying? You know what you can do. You know what you're about. You know what you bring to the table. That's all that matters. You ain't got to say what you can do. When you put in a position where you have to show what you can do, that's what counts. All they're talking about doing this, doing that, doing the third, that don't mean shit. It don't, to a real one, you know what I mean? People who love to listen to that type of crap, oh, they will listen, and they will give you that energy, they'll laugh, do whatever kind of shit, whatever. But when it's time to show and prove, when it's time to really get it in, watch out. Because as they say, it's the quiet ones you got, you know what I'm saying, you got to watch out for. The type, Tank Tank is a quiet dude, humble. He got two kids, got two baby girls, you know what I'm saying? So he kind of, you know what I mean, drifted away from wilding out. You know what I'm saying? We all know his past, getting in the shit. Tank ain't like that no more, man. Tank trying to quiet down, focus on his career, be a family man outside of the ring, get his money. Now he's really focusing on his legacy and his career. He's putting a lot of the dumb stuff to the side, you know what I mean? And I commend him for that because he's growing up. He's a man now. Now, you heard him before. There's a lot of speculation. And people was talking about he's leaving Mayweather promotions. And now you're hearing people talk about, actually, excuse me, let me correct myself. Now, Tank is talking about it's a possibility <clears throat> that he may stay with Mayweather promotions. We're going to see how things, you know what I'm saying, shake up and shake out after the fight. Okay, real quick. Garante Tang Davis, 26-0, 24 knockouts, WBA World Lightweight Champion. Now, Tank is 27. As I said, Tank is, he's still young, but at the same time, Tank is getting older. So, it's time to put the games and everything to the side. As I said, that's what Tank is doing. Now, Tank is a shorter guy. He's 5'5 five, five and a half. You know what I mean? 67 inch reach, 67 and a half, you want to be accurate. Um, he's a southpaw. Tank is a dangerous southpaw. We all know he's repping B more. You dig what I'm saying? We all know where Tank come from. We all know what he used to be about. You dig what I'm saying? So when you talk, when you talk about certain things in the street, Tank know what it is. He already said it himself, you know what I'm saying? Because if this was a real beef, you'd have been dealt with already. And that's facts.